over 10 years now, the Nissan GTR has been terrorizing supercars from all over the world. Also known as the Supercar Slayer and also known as the Godzilla, the Nissan GTR is all about going fast like any other performance car. But how it lays down that performance on the road is what you cannot possibly imagine and what makes the Nissan GTR different from any other supercar out there. Be it accelerating from a standstill, going through the corners, or going through the gears. The Godzilla does everything in style and quickly. It just takes a big gulp of fuel, burns it up and spits it out of the exhaust and does it just like a boss. So let's start off with the design of the new GTR. Over its predecessor, this one's got a much more sleeker design. It's got new bumper, it's got a redesigned grille, a new hood and it also has a new rear diffuser. At the rear, changes are minimal but the circular twin tail lamps that the GTR is well known for now features LEDs. The side profile again looks chiseled and sharp and lends the car a kinetic stance as if it just wants to get going at full blast. The cabin of the new GTR features some changes over its older model but then again they are not enough to give it a radical makeover. However, what you get is a cabin that's purely focused on performance. The center console is tilted towards the driver. Everything looks as if it were made to help you go fast. And that is the purpose of the GTR. So what's the main luxury feature? Well, it's draped in leather. We're talking about the driver's seat. It's a very good seat, very comfortable, offers brilliant support, especially the side support and the under thigh support is very good when you're going really hard around those corners. It holds you firmly into the place. The touchscreen infotainment display offers the usual options for music, connectivity, reverse parking. Now one of the key USPs of the screen is the performance data it reveals. Now it gives you various options. In this option I can view what amount of throttle I am applying, the acceleration of the braking g-forces, the amount of boost being applied by the turbochargers, what pressure is on the brake pedal. Apart from that, the engine oil temperature, cooling temperature, steering direction. You can also view your speed, your acceleration data. And apart from that, again on this screen, you can view the braking and acceleration g-forces, the pedal force on the accelerator and the turbo boost. So all of it really comes down to a point where you understand that everything in this car is purely built for the focus of going fast. That is the sole purpose of the GTR. Now adding further to the performance quotient of the vehicle are these three toggle switches here. Now the first one is where you can customize the gearbox response. The second one helps you adjust the suspension settings and the third one adjusts the traction control settings. Using these, if you put any of them in the R mode, that means they are on the maximum setting. These help you extract more performance from the GTR and that is precisely what this car is all about. Apart from that, if you talk about practicality, well, it is a four-seater, but it's more of a 1.5 on each side. So essentially, you can have kids sitting at the rear. Adults can be there, but maybe just for about 10 to 15 minutes, it gets sort of uncomfortable and also with a very less glass area, it gets claustrophobic very soon. But then again, the GTR is not about seating four people and going around places. It's all about going fast and for that, you only need two seats and a big engine. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, before we start talking about the engine of this car, an interesting fact about it is that all of the engines of the GTR are hand-built. Now, this one has been built by Tsunemi Oyama and as you can see, the name is inscribed on the engine. Well, this car is powered by a 3.8-litre twin-turbocharged V6 engine. It develops a massive 562 horsepower and 637 newton meters of torque. Now, add to that some mind-boggling computing power and what you get is an acceleration from standstill to 100 km an hour under 3 seconds. Now you know why this is called the supercar slayer. Thumb the start button and the Nissan GTR comes to life in a rather gentle manner. It doesn't really sound that special. 
Well, even if you are puttering around the town um, at moderate speeds, even then it doesn't really sound as if it's a car that can take down most Ferraris in a straight line. But then again, if you put it into all dynamic mode, take control of the transmission manually and mash down your right foot. Oh, that is what you get. The engine is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission, which complements the performance really well. If you want to take control of the gear shifts manually, well, you have these beautiful paddle shifters on the steering wheel, and you also have the button to really change the transmission settings. Now, what about the handling? Well, it perfectly goes in sync with the performance. It's got a brilliant chassis setup. It's got a brilliant suspension. The steering wheel is good. And then again, the computers sort everything for you. So there's very little room for going wrong. The grip from the Dunlop tires and the mechanical grip from the car overall is phenomenal. It's so much that around corners, it literally feels as if the car has got leeches on the tire and they're literally sucking the car into the road. So what does the GTR do best? Well, it's a fun car and it delivers a big plastering smile on your face. All you need to do is downshift and mash the throttle. Oh, oh, it's insane. This is massive. It redlines all the way up to 7,000 RPM. The gear shifts are insanely quick. That is what the GTR is all about. Now that we've been telling you how good the Nissan GTR or rather how impressive, massively impressive this car is, is there a negative to it? Well, in terms of performance, there isn't that I've been able to find, but there is one small problem with the car and that is its key. Now this key doesn't really look as if it belongs to a supercar. Now I've also got the key of our Nissan Micra long termer. And if you look at these keys, they're almost similar. The only differentiating factor is the GTR emblem on the key. And this looks like a cheap key. That's the only problem with this car. The Nissan GTR then is for those who seek blistering acceleration, neck wrenching handling, and eyeball popping braking power. But all of this without any compromise on practicality, or rather, maybe with a little compromise on practicality. The GTR may not look as special as some of the other Italian supercars, but then again, it's got a design that looks purposeful. It's got a design that screams speed. It looks as if it is made only to go fast. And that is what the GTR is all about. It's all about speed, acceleration, performance. While the GTR is referred to as the supercar slayer, it doesn't really come cheap at about Rs 2 crore ex showroom Delhi. Now at this price point, what you need to consider is there is no other car in the Indian market or possibly even the world that can compete with the Godzilla on pure performance parameters. In short, the GTR can do a bit of what most luxury cars can deliver. However, any other car in the world cannot do what the Godzilla can.